before I go any further, let me just mention that if you're asking yourself, why is there a Black History Month? Let me just remind you that one of the two uh, candidates for Republican nomination said recently that we have never been a racist country. Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome to my video in which I'm going to give you a reading list for Black History Month. This is in no way comprehensive. This is in no way, you know, taking you uh, deep into historical theory or economic theory or any of those other things. These are, I think, I counted 21, 22 uh, excellent books about uh, the black experience in the United States of America and before the United States of America, all written by black authors. Many of these books are books that I've uh, talked about on my channel before and have appeared in videos before. So I'm going to go through these relatively quickly. I think a lot of people probably have read these. And, and, you know, if you are, you know, looking for books to read for Black History Month, don't just listen to watch my video here. But look down in the comments and see which ones uh, other people who comment uh, suggest or which ones the ones on my list people back up and say uh, are really good. Uh, and to use this video kind of as I intended to be as a resource for starting or continuing or getting into reading for Black History Month. So here we go. I'm going to go through this list relatively uh, quickly and not talk about any of the books in really great detail. So the first two books on my list are both slave narratives, and that is they are written by enslaved people once they achieve freedom, and these are probably the two that are most likely to be read. Uh, there are lots out there, and I would encourage you to read uh, any of any of them. By the way, both of these are available for free on LibriVox, uh, where you can listen to them on the LibriVox Act. So the first one is 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northrop. I think this is probably the, uh, the slave narrative, which gives us the greatest insights into the way slavery worked in the Deep South. And, you know, not to get into this too much, but slavery worked differently in the Deep and South and the cotton-producing South uh, than it did uh, in the Upper South in Virginia and places like that in terms of work uh, and, and those kind of things that, that enslaved people had to do. The second of these slave narratives I want to mention is the Instance in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs, also excellent, but, but very different. Both these books, by the way, provide insight into the treatment uh, of black women uh, under, under slavery, which I think still is one of those things that people don't quite have their heads wrapped around. Uh, the Next thing I would like, I would encourage you to read, or the next book I'd encourage you to read is The 1619 Project. Now, you know, that is a big hardback book, and it has, you know, a reputation for not being historically accurate, which is largely unfair. I would say uh, by the time the, the book was produced, the historical inaccuracies were removed. Uh, and then what a lot of historians uh, have a problem with isn't just the book was inaccurate, isn't that the book was inac inaccurate, but they felt like the authors interpreted historical events in ways that they didn't feel right. Those are two different things. But at the very least, the beginning essay uh, in the 1619 Project about the beginnings of slavery in the United States, I think, is a, is a really great uh, read. Uh, and so that would be something I encourage you to read. The next book on my list is a book that was, was my nonfiction read of last year, and that's The Hemingses of Monticello. Uh, this is about uh, Thomas Jefferson's uh, slaves, and particularly one enslaved family, the Hemingses, with which he uh, uh, he fathered several children with one of the uh, women uh, who was enslaved to him, which means, you know, that was an act of coercion and rape. Um, and the book does more than just talk about the Hemings and the self. It actually kind of gives really good insight into the way slavery happened uh, colonially and to how much of a, an, an, how much of an enslaver's wealth was tied up in slaves and why, you know, perhaps to a certain extent, you know, Jefferson doesn't free his slaves because of the money things. Changing directions uh, completely. Oh, by the way, uh, the Hemings and Monticello is written by Annette Gordon-Reed. Uh, changing uh, Gears Completely, Solitary by Albert Woodfox, which was uh, a book that was widely read here on BookTube uh, a few years ago. Uh, Albert Woodfox served, I believe, more than 30, something like 40 years in prisons in uh, Louisiana, uh, oftentimes for trumped up charges, charges brought against him for things that he was alleged to have done while he was in prison, which he didn't necessarily do, held in solitary confinement. Uh, for decades, and he eventually got out and wrote this book, which really is a book about the abuses of the American criminal justice system as focused on uh, black people and on the abuses of the prison system, again, oftentimes focused uh, on black people. Uh, the next book on my list is Our Prisons Obsolete by Angela Y. Davis. Uh, this is a book, it's relatively old, in which uh, Davis explores the idea of perhaps getting rid of prisons, abolishing prisons, and why prisons don't work and why they're ineffective at doing what uh, they claim to be doing and why they are, you know, 
po quite possibly something that we need to think about replacing. It's a short book. It's a good book. And Davis is certainly an author who should be read. Uh, the next book on the list is The New Jim Crow uh, by Michelle Alexander. Is that right? I always get the last name right. Yeah, by Michelle by Michelle Alexander. Uh, this is one of the most important books probably written uh, about issues involving race uh, over the last couple of decades. Uh, New Jim Crow basically makes the case that the crime bill and the get tough and put people in prison bill and you know the three strikes and you're in law were really just a way of continuing uh, to abuse and persecute. Uh, particularly black men in American society by imprisoning for long periods of time, uh, guaranteeing poverty and family problems that exist uh, within uh, uh, black communities uh, and, you know, perpetuating that, that kind of system. Uh, really well argued, really brilliant book, well worth uh, anybody reading. The next book on my list is Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. Wilkerson's much more famous uh, for The Warmth of Other Sons, her story about uh, the Great Migration and following uh, a few individuals who left the Deep South during the Great Migration. I think Cast is one of the books that is probably a little bit less read here uh, or, or less often read, but I think it's really important because it, it, it creates a really powerful historical argument uh, about how, you know, essentially racism in the United States is a caste system creating a permanent underclass, economic underclass uh, of black Americans, uh, and that the system itself is designed to keep black Americans from being more successful uh, and compares it to the caste system in India, compares it to uh, the system the Nazis set up in Nazi Germany, which by the way was based uh, largely on uh, segregation laws in the United States, a really great book. Along those lines also, uh, White Rage by Carol Anderson's book, whose praises I've sung many times, which essentially shows how every time uh, there is some success, every time um, black people in the United States have been able to achieve some kind of civil rights, make some kind of gains, that's led to a white uh, backlash, uh, which is, you know, attempt to gain back or claw back some of those gains or take some of those gains away from the black community. Just as the most recent example I give you, you know, uh, President Obama was elected, uh, the first black president elected in 2008. And immediately after he left office, we elected, uh, you know, a racist and a bigot to be president of the United States. Uh, and uh, who has rallied kind of white nationalists to his cause, uh, focusing attention on people who are minorities and, you know, creating fear and trying to, you know, use that fear among the white community about losing power, which is what Rage is really about, to, you know, make himself popular. One of the most important books I think I've read probably in the last four or five years is The Sum of Us by Heather McGee. And The Sum of Us basically argues really effectively and with, you know, a lot of real, with math and statistics and things like that, that racism is actually, and particularly segregation and discrimination, actually hurt everybody in the United States. That, you know, if we could get past this racism and stop thinking about, uh, or, or particularly if white America could stop thinking about, you know, gains made by uh, black Americans as taking something away from them, stop thinking about a zero sum game and realize that uh, advancing everybody, advancing you know, black Americans advances and helps everybody, then we'd be a lot better off. Uh, I think it's a great argument and a really powerful book. And it's one of those books I think about all the time. Um, along the same lines, I would say, you know, uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X as told to the author, Alex Haley, uh, is another great uh, book, another interesting read about, you know, at least looking at Malcolm X's view of himself. Now I haven't read uh, the more recent biography of Malcolm X or the recent biography of Martin Luther King uh, Jr. But I, I found the autobiography of Malcolm X to be really insightful uh, and that Malcolm X was oftentimes, you know, uh, whether he was intended or not, revealed a lot about himself and the struggles and it kind of create, creates, I think, a really good picture of the problems faced by black Americans in the United States and himself as well. Uh, two books of essays then uh, to recommend to you in a row. First is a book I read this year. And it's on my, you know, one of my top nonfiction reads as well, and that's Men We Reap by Jesmyn Ward, in which she discusses the way in which American society uh, is essentially killing black men, young black men, in all kinds of different ways, uh, looking at uh, five cases, I believe, of young black men in her own life and her own family, her own community, who died uh, young and tragically, including her brother, really powerful uh, reading. And then since Jesmyn Ward wrote uh, another book called The Fire, uh, 
this time, I think. I would also recommend you read any essay collection by James Baldwin, any essay by James Baldwin. Uh, the Fire Deck's Time, I read them all in a, in a big kind of collection called The Price of a Ticket. Uh, just really great. James Baldwin should be read uh, more widely than even he is already. But, you know, uh, an essay, essays by James Baldwin, I think, uh, would be great. Uh, let's see. And then kind of getting into reading fiction. I probably have a little less fiction on my list, I think, than nonfiction. Uh, I think Another Country by James Baldwin is my, it's definitely my favorite James Baldwin novel. And I think the first section of that book is some of the greatest writing any Americans ever produced in terms of giving a depiction of the frustrations and, and life of an American, in this case, uh, an Ameri a black American man, and just really powerful uh, book. The whole thing's good, but the first part is just stunningly good. Uh, and then also then, obviously, you know, I, I believe you have to read Toni Morrison, and if you haven't picked up a Toni Morrison novel already, let me encourage you to do that. Uh, this month, Beloved is, I think, the greatest American novel, uh, you know, produced up to the point in which it was published. Um, it deals with really difficult um, themes of slavery and sexual violence and violence, uh, and it's written uh, in a way which many readers find challenging. Uh, but I think, you know, it is well worth uh, the challenge uh, and going back and reading and rereading it is great. If for whatever reason you don't think you're willing to take on that challenge uh, presented by the way in which uh, Beloved is written, then uh, A Mercy uh, covers a lot of the same territory, uh, but in a more uh, straightforward way. And uh, my friend Jack from the channel Rambling Rack and Tour pointed out this connection to me, and it's definitely there. And you could read A, a Mercy by Morrison first and then may go back and read Beloved if you wanted to. Uh, but anyway, Underground Railroad, uh, the next book on my list by Colson Whitehead. No surprise here, uh, two-time National Book Award winner, I believe, and this is the first one uh, that Colson Whitehead won the National Book Award for. And it is a look not only uh, at slavery and its effect on black people, but all kinds of other than uh, ways in which black Americans have been subjected to mistreatment and violence um, and, you know, discrimination, et cetera, at the hands of not just white society, but the government as well, uh, kind of told in a, in a in a slightly fanciful way uh, in which, you know, the Underground Railroad is a real train, and it essentially takes its passenger, who's the primary character, to these different points in American uh, United States racial history. Uh, I just thought it was great. Uh, I read that before I got on book two, uh, but a great book. Uh, a classic in this uh, area of work of fiction is Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison, uh, which, you know, is, is, is a book that's a little bit challenging to read, but really, I think, gives uh, insight as we see Ellison's main character move from being uh, subjected to direct racism to less direct racism to essentially feeling like, uh, you know, he is an unseen person, almost an unperson. Uh, in American society. I just thought, you know, it, it's just a really great book. This year I plan to read uh, Juneteenth by Ralph Ellison. Again, this was something suggested to me by Jack over the channel Rambling Rack and Tour. Uh, getting back to nonfiction, I, I thought about putting um, Ta-Nehisi Coates' book uh, on here, but instead I thought I would recommend a book which is similar uh, to his, and that is Breathe by Amani Perry. Breathe a Letter to My Sons by Monty Perry. Monty Perry is a black academic, and she writes this book, uh, essentially a book aimed at her uh, young sons and how to navigate their way through the racist world of American society. Uh, I underestimated it the first time I read it, but it is uh, incredibly powerful. The book I also read this year is Wade in the Water by, oh, what's her first name? Uh, by Nyani Nkrumah. Uh, I read this book because it was recommended to me by uh, Scott at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. And what I would say is if you uh, if you have read To Kill a Mockingbird and you think if to, to Kill a Mockingbird is a statement on racism in the United States of America, let me challenge you to read Wade in the Water. It was told from the point of view of a young black girl, notice the connection there, uh, in uh, the 1960s, uh, dealing with racism, uh, dealing with uh, all the facets of racism and all the problems that exist, you know, in her world uh, as a poor uh, black girl living in uh, rural Mississippi. A uh, really uh, powerful story. You know, I had some issues with the way in which the story was told or some things in it, but it is a it is a very good book, and I think uh, a book to be read with To Kill a Mockingbird to give perhaps a more realistic picture 
of what things were like actually like in the South for uh, black people. Also on this list, a book that I also didn't think was necessarily one of the greatest books, but I think has some of those powerful depictions of racism and racist violence uh, in it. And that is The Last Thing You Surrender by Lewis Pitts Jr. Read this a couple of years ago. Uh, it is a book set during and around World War II. It involves uh, lynching and you know trigger warnings for violence here uh, and then just kind of racism, racist society of America's past. Uh, can't make a list like this uh, without recommending that you read The Trees by Percival Everett, uh, which I think is the last book on my list, The Trees, which is a satire looking at race relations in the American South uh, still today uh, that kind of takes off from uh, the killing of Emmett Till and uses that kind of as a focal point for the beginning of looking at the history of racist violence in the United States. Um, and when you finish The Trees, I would also suggest that you might want to read Erasure, which is a book about uh, how, you know, uh, I think somewhat similar to uh, Invisible Man, uh, in which, you know, a black man, essentially, who's a writer, uh, is struggling in his career as a writer uh, because he writes these great books, which, you know, people praise for being great, but nobody buys. Uh, and he feels this then pressure this uh, to write what, you know, people would consider to be a typical black book about a young black man who's involved in all kinds of crime and drugs. Uh, and it is a send up of the publishing industry and American culture and what American culture uh, expects from black people uh, and black writers and black people in general. It's just a really great book and American fiction, I believe was nominated for an Oscar and that is a movie adaptation of Erasure. Anyway, there you go. There is my list of, there's my reading list for Black History Month. Like I said, if you've read these books uh, and you want to you know, back me up and say, yes, that's a great book, you should read it, please leave that comment down below for people who might be using this or looking at this video as a resource. If you have other books you'd like to add to the list, you know, I certainly didn't cover every book here. I can think, you know, sitting here are four or five others that I didn't put on the list for, for various reasons. Uh, in part, maybe because I wanted to draw more attention to a different book, but you know, leave that down below for people as well. Anyway, there you go. I look forward to your comments in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.